Hello everyone, my name is Liam McCartney. I'm a Senior Assistant Director on the Board of Admissions here at Boston University, and I'm excited to be spending some time with you today talking about the opportunities that await you as a student here at BU. And to do so, I'm excited to be joined by a current student who I'm gonna let introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin. I am currently a junior here at Boston University. I'm originally from New Hampshire. I'm currently studying human physiology on a pre-medical track in our Sargent College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences with a minor in Business Administration and Management in our Questrom School of Business. So today, Caitlin and I are going to be sharing information with you about Boston University, the academic experiences that await you here on our campus, as well as what it's going to be like to live here on our campus here within the city of Boston. But first, let's start with the broadest definition of what Boston University is. We are a large, private teaching and research institution located right here in the western section of the city of Boston. We are home to about 16,000 undergraduate students who are studying in 10 different undergraduate schools and colleges, which range from the College of Arts and Sciences, the largest and broadest of our schools and colleges, all the way down to smaller schools and colleges with really specialized programs like our School of Hospitality Administration, our Wheelock College of Education and Human Development, and our College of Communication. And within these different schools and colleges, you're going to be challenged in each of them individually, but also across the schools and colleges. We are a place that, regardless of what you're studying, is going to require that you build a solid foundation of the liberal arts through a curriculum called the BU Hub. Boston University believes firmly in the liberal arts as being that strong foundation so that no matter what you are studying, you're able to go um, and learn from those past experiences in different academic areas um, with your individual specialization. Now, while there are 10 distinct undergraduate schools and colleges here at BU, um, you are able to move in between them. We are one Boston University and we encourage students to combine majors um, and, and minors, um, to change their major and minor if they would like, um, and that's something that's definitely going to be possible through that flexibility um, that our academics offer. About 30% of Boston University students start their time here at BU as a formally undeclared student. They are not tied down to any individual school and college or major, and they'll spend maybe their first semester, maybe their first two years, um, exploring the different options that Boston University has to offer. Other students we know will come in with one program thinking that's what they want to study, but after a few classes or a few semesters, um, they might realize that there's a different major here at BU that's calling them, that's allowing them to be able to pursue their passions in a more dynamic way. Um, and so we certainly see students changing their major, whether it's staying within the same school or college or moving between schools and colleges um, as an undergraduate student. Now, Caitlin, I know that while you're studying human physiology now, you're not, um, you didn't start out th that way here at BU. Can you talk a little bit about what that experience looked like um, in changing your major? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I actually was in high school, I knew I liked biology and chemistry. So when I was applying to colleges, I was looking for majors like that. Um, I saw that a lot of colleges had a biochemistry major. I didn't exactly know what that meant, but I knew that it combined the two words that I liked. Um, so that's what I applied to all of my schools as. Um, I applied to Boston University as a biochemist chemistry, molecular biology major. Um, I did that my entire freshman year. Uh, after my freshman year, I kind of realized what being a biochemistry major meant. I looked into the courses that I would have to take and I just wasn't super excited about them. So I actually started looking at different majors in different schools and colleges here at BU. Um, I found the human physiology major, which I was super excited about because the classes were a lot more interesting to me, um, such as gross anatomy, where we actually get to dissect human cadavers, which is super cool. Um, and a lot of the physiology classes I really liked. Great. So in addition to changing your major here at the university, um, this uh, flexibility between the different schools and colleges does mean that, as I said, you might take classes in different schools and colleges. You may end up with a double major studying two different things. You may even have a dual degree where you have two majors in two of the different schools and colleges here at the university. And for other students, it might mean having a major in one school and a minor in another. So Caitlin, I know that while you're majoring in the College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences, your minor is within the Questrom School of Business. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what led you to come up with this combination um, and how that process looked for you? Yeah, um, so when I originally switched my major into human physiology, that was my first semester sophomore year, and then second semester sophomore year, I decided to switch or uh, add on my business minor. I basically decided to do a business minor because I knew I wanted my minor in something that had nothing to do with science. Um, I just kind of wanted to get my feet wet in something um, that wasn't science, so I really th found the business minor interesting. Uh, my dad, in his career, 
he's a financial advisor, so I really find his job rewarding, and I wanted to take a finance class, which I could do through the business minor. And I figured if I didn't end up doing something with my science major, once I graduated, I could always make use of the education I learned through my business minor as well. Awesome. Um, and we see a lot of students doing that, combining those different areas of interest. One of the most important things that our advisors and, and our faculty are hoping that students will get out of their experience here at BU is that you will be passionate about what you are studying. So keep an open mind. Know that you might take a class here um, that at first doesn't excite you, but halfway through the semester or maybe even halfway through that first class leads you to realize that this is a really um, interesting topic that you might want to add on to your major as a minor. Um, think about shifts that could happen um, in your career. And I think that we're seeing a lot of students here at BU to take advantage of those opportunities. Another thing that all schools and colleges have in common here at Boston University is the commitment to making sure, as I said, that all of your classes are going to be taught by highly qualified, engaged faculty members and professors. 100% um, of classes at Boston University are taught by professors here at BU. Um, and so you know that every time you walk into a class getting ready to learn that new material, it's going to be taught by a faculty member here. Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1, and the average class size here at Boston University is just 27 students, which I think can sometimes be surprising for people when they know that we're a school with 16,000 undergraduate students. But that commitment to small class sizes means that when you um, think about the interactions that you'll get to have with professors, they are in those smaller classroom settings where professors are able to get to know their students and really help them to be successful, both in that individual class, but also within um, their the entire four years, helping them to find research and internship opportunities. Being that person who's writing a letter of recommendation um, for a job that they're applying for at the end of their time here at BU, or for um, a graduate program that they're thinking about after they finish their bachelor's work here. So Caitlin, can you tell me a little bit about a professor that has been an impactful part of your experience here at Boston University? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my favorite professor I've had so far, his name is Professor Dr. Beffert. He taught my cellular biology class first semester sophomore year, and I just really loved him for a lot of different reasons. Um, he actually held four hours of office hours every week, where professors I think are only required to have two, so we actually went above and beyond and um, those are basically hours where you can just go and ask specific questions one-on-one -on -one to your professor. So they're very useful. Um, he also used to write MCAT exam questions for the actual MCAT agency. Um, so all of our exams were MCAT style and really helped us prepare for taking that exam later in our education. Um, and he also, like you said, he actually wrote a lot of letter of recommendations for all of the students in our class. And he also had a few of us actually join his research lab. Um, I wasn't one of them, but I know a few of my classmates joined his research lab as well. Um, so just with the opportunities he provided all of us students and him willing to go above and beyond for us, he became my favorite professor. Awesome. And I think that uh, Caitlin points out a really important factor, right? That professors who are teaching at Boston University may have done something really interesting or exciting or dynamic prior to coming uh, to BU. Um, we have on our faculty Guggenheim Fellows, Pulitzer Prize winners, um, MacArthur Geniuses, 30 members of the Boston Symphony Orchestra that teach in our School of Music. And that level of, engage, uh, of professional engagement that faculty have had really do help to lend you know, a real amount of credibility and, and um, uh, emphasis to the work that they've done, um, to the work that they're doing now in, in teaching our students. But it's also important to know that it's not just the accolades that hang on a professor's wall that make them impressive, but it's the interactions that they're having with students throughout their uh, experience here at BU. So it's those extended office hours, it's commitment to connecting with students um, in all types of different ways um, throughout the year. I've known professors who have had late night office hours prior to big exams to help students to prepare, um, who have held kind of open houses um, where you can come in and get some extra help with the experience and maybe they've done a little bit of baking before that. Um, professors who have said, let's do an early morning jog down the esplanade right adjacent to our campus. So while faculty are going to be responsible for all of that formal teaching, standing in the front of a class or sitting around a discussion table and teaching that new material, you aren't just learning from professors when you're at a university, you're also learning from the people sitting on either side of you. Um, these are going to be your students, your classmates, your peers um, for the entire time that you're an undergraduate student. At Boston University, we are thrilled to know that our students come from all 50 states within the US and over 100 different countries from around the world. About 24% of Boston University undergraduate students are international students, traveling hundreds or thousands of miles to study here on our campus. 
Our students represent a wide variety of different racial and ethnic backgrounds. They come from different uh, points of view um, with, uh, politically. They have different religious backgrounds. Um, they are studying, as I mentioned, over 300 different programs of study in our 10 undergraduate schools and colleges, and they are participating in about 450 different clubs and activity outside of the classroom. There's no such thing as that typical Boston University experience. There's no such thing as that typical Boston University student. We know that the diversity of thought and the diversity of points of view that our students have, when that comes together on our campus, it only makes us stronger. Conversations that happen in academic settings, conversations that happen casually between students as they're enjoying a meal in one of our dining halls, over a box of pizza in the residence hall, between students as they're passing between classes or heading to a different campus community event or exploring the city of Boston. And I think it really is the diversity um, and our commitment to that diversity here at BU that is one of BU's strongest points um, as an institution. Caitlin, as you think a little bit about your experiences with the student body here at BU, um, can you talk a little bit about what that diversity has meant to you? Yeah, absolutely. So coming just from New Hampshire an hour away, um, it was definitely a bit of a shock to have all this diversity here on campus. Um, my freshman year, I actually roomed with someone who was from Korea, so I learned a lot about her culture, a lot about her language and her family, which was very interesting. Um, also, just in my classes as a whole, I met people from all over the U.S., all over the world. Um, I got to go to some of their club events, so my friend actually had the Holy Festival. We got to do that together. Um, I have a friend in the Lebanese Student Association, so I got to learn about their culture through some of the free events they throw on campus. Um, so yeah, just all learning about different people's languages, different cultures, all of those events that we have on campus. Um, a lot of the times you can actually go to for free as well. Awesome. And so while we have international students joining us here on our campus, um, as I said, from over 100 different countries, um, we also look to take students um, who are studying here at BU and send them to different parts of the world um, to spend some time during a study abroad program. Now I know that when I'm talking to prospective students, um, regardless of if they know that Boston University is their number one choice or if they're considering lots of options, for many students they are thinking about that study abroad component. And you should know that Boston University has one of the oldest and largest study abroad programs in the country. We have nearly 100 different programs um, available for students across all six inhabited continents in about 25 to 30 different cities and countries around the world. And our study abroad office is continuing to add new programs to think about ways that we can continue in, to engage as global citizens away from the city of Boston itself. Uh, for some of our students, it might, that might mean spending a full semester. For others, it could be a shorter summer program. And for some, it might even be an entire academic year. The type of program can really vary depending on the experience that you're looking for. Perhaps it's traveling with Boston University professors and maintaining that kind of BU community um, in another area, um, living in Boston University housing and taking classes from BU professors. For other students, they are looking to enroll directly in another university, become themselves that international exchange student for a semester um, with some of the programs that we have at the National University of Singapore, um, universities in Hong Kong, in Korea, in Turkey, and other parts of the world. But for most students who are opting to study abroad here at BU, the most popular type of program are our internship programs abroad. And this means that not only will you be taking classes for academic credit as a Boston University student, but you'll also be pursuing an internship outside of the city of Boston. That might mean staying in the United States, going to Washington DC, for example, for our political science students can offer them great opportunities um, to intern on the Hill or at an NGO um, or any, any one of the agencies um, that exist um, in the capital of the US. For students in the College of Communication in our film and television program, that might mean traveling to Los Angeles um, and interning in various studios and various types of different opportunities um, that we have with our strong alumni network and connections in the industry in LA. But it also can mean going to London, to Madrid, to Paris, to Sydney, Australia, Auckland, New Zealand, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Quito, Ecuador, and spending time not only taking classes, as I said, but gaining that professional experience working with advisors in the study abroad office to be connected to one of more than 4,000 different internship opportunities that we have outside of the United States in one of our study abroad programs. So that you can tell them, this is what I'm looking for in an experience, and know that when you get there, you're going to get that professional international work experience that you can put onto your resume, really helping um, what is go gonna be happening with your job prospects when you're looking to graduate from BU. It's also important to note that study abroad is available for every student at BU, regardless of your program of study. So even students in those kind of more structured programs like our Wheelock College of Education um, and Human Development, for our students in the College of Fine Arts, for our students in the College of Engineering, 
If you're looking for that semester outside the U.S. to gain that international experience, we've built programs specifically for you so that you can have that type of experience. And the last note about study abroad, it's important to know that any academic credit that you earn through a BU study abroad program will travel back to campus with you. And any financial aid or scholarship that you have, whether that's need-based or merit-based, will travel with you to a Boston University study abroad program so that these programs can be available to all students who are studying here at Boston University. Internships exist, yes, as I said, in these study abroad programs, but they also happen for our students right here in the city of Boston and elsewhere across the United States. Um, about 94% of Boston University students have at least one internship by the time that they graduate, and they work with um, our Center for Career Development here on campus, with our alumni network, and with our faculty connections to find different experiences related to their field, whether that's alongside their classes um, here in Boston, maintaining a full-time academic schedule but also getting that professional experience, or whether it's um, spending some time over a summer break or winter break getting those experiences as well. So Caitlin, I know that you've already had an internship experience um, uh, last year. Can you talk a little bit about in your second year here, what was that internship like? How did you find it? Uh, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, um, so my first semester sophomore year, I was a clinical research intern at Boston Children's Hospital. Um, I was basically looking at different hospital websites and looking at if they had internships for students or not. Um, so that's how I did find that internship, just directly through the website. Basically what that entailed, um, I did all of the patient recruitment for the study as well as any patient questionnaires that were returned to the study. I did all of the statistical analysis um, behind all of those questionnaires that were returned to us. Um, I'm also currently looking for an internship this summer that's coming up. And also in my senior year, I am required to do an internship within my curriculum. So hopefully I'll actually have three internships before I graduate. Awesome. So when you talk about the search that happened before this internship that you've had and the one that's ongoing now, have you been able to utilize any of the resources at the Center for Career Development? And if so, which resources have they been? Yeah, absolutely. So the Center for Career Development is awesome. They have um, resume review, which I've used for sure. Um, you can go there with a copy of your resume and they'll mark through it what you should change or maybe add on. Um, they also do mock interviews as well. So before you go to an interview, you can do a mock one and get pointers on what you could improve on. Um, they also do a lot of career advising, which I definitely need going into my senior year. Um, so I'll be making use of that pretty soon. Um, and then they do a also have a website called Handshake that's basically a Boston University specific LinkedIn so basically these companies know that BU students are looking for these jobs so they post it directly on Handshake only for us to see um, so I've definitely been making use of Handshake looking for these internships um, also as a question minor um, I do have access to all of the business school advising as well. So I have been going there a lot um, for their career advising and their resume review. And then also within my major, I obviously have Sargent College advisors as well. So they um, help me with all of my course planning for my major as well as that internship within my senior year. Um, they help me find which hospitals I'll be interning at or help me gain connections to those hospitals. And when you think about the internship that you're going to have in your senior year, what are you hoping to get out of that experience, which will kind of be a culmination um, of your studies in Sargent College? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that internship is kind of really open-ended. You can pick whatever topic you want to intern in. So like I said earlier, I'm really interested in the physiology classes that I'm taking. Um, currently, I'm in an exercise physiology class. So I think an exercise physiology lab might be interesting for that. Um, I know a lot of people will do clinical research or maybe bench research for that internship as well. Um, and then also just being a science major with a business minor. I'm thinking I could even do an internship where I'm working in a lab, but maybe on the administration side of the lab, just so I can kind of combine the two things that I'm studying, but still gain credit for that internship. Awesome. So while many students may think about this professional development and this professional experience through internships, we also see a lot of students thinking about how they can harness the uh, research opportunities here at BU uh, to think about their own professional development. Boston University, as I said at the very beginning of this presentation, is a teaching and a research institution. And research is really important to the core of our existence as a place of study um, here in the city of Boston. BU is a member of the AAU, um, and this membership um, really does demonstrate the commitment that Boston University has to our undergraduate students and the opportunities that are available for them with research. Research can happen from as early as your first or second year here at Boston University, where you can talk to a professor and get involved with a lab as an undergraduate research assistant. I have known a good number of students who, at the, by the end of their first year on campus, have already gotten that type of experience. 
And this is the type of experience that can allow them to understand what does it mean to do research um, here um, at Boston University at a large uh, teaching and research uh, institution? What does it mean to write a grant? What does it mean to analyze data at the highest level? What does it mean to take all of the findings and put them into an article that might be published in an academic journal? And by taking those experiences early on, many of our students are then able to turn and do their own individual projects through a program called the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, UROP, which we call UROP. And through UROP, you are able to go and meet with an advisor, submit a proposal to be connected with the funding that you need um, for materials in the lab, um, the ability to travel and collect data, whatever your hypothesis might be, um, so that you're able to, you know, to, to spend some time, maybe over the summer, maybe during the academic year, pursuing that research passion. And it's important to note that research happens, yes, in the science um, fields, in the STEM fields, um, in our College of Engineering for sure, but it also happens in the humanities, in the arts, in the social sciences. So regardless of what your area of study is here at BU, if you have that passion to dive a little bit deeper, to follow a question, to um, further an inquiry that you've been asking for a while, you're going to find the opportunities to do so here at BU. Um, and we see dozens of our students presenting at national and international conferences, being published in, in academic journals, all before they graduate from BU with their bachelor's degree. There are many different types of experience. I could spend a full hour just talking about the examples that I've thought of. I'll leave you with two um, examples, I think, in this presentation. One is any of the research that you have read um, with the CTE scans for American football players. Um, that is research that is happening right here at Boston University on our medical campus. But I've known two undergraduate neuroscience students who were able um, to help with that research. So this is uh, leading research um, that is changing the way that we talk about injuries in sports. Um, and it's happening right here at BU with the assistance of undergraduate students. I also know another two students who just graduated last year and they were able to have their findings published in Marine Science Journal and their findings were about uh, the uh, microplastic pollution um, that's happening across the world um, but specifically what they were finding uh, in the Caribbean when they were participating in a study abroad program through our uh, Marine Science program um, in the country of Belize. They were doing some shallow water diving, found some red plastic microfibers and turned this into a full-blown research project that, as I mentioned, was able to be published in a marine science academic journal prior to their graduation. And these are just two of the examples among dozens and dozens that I could share with you today about students taking the opportunities that they have here at BU and turning them into a real experiences. I encourage you to visit the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program website. There are some fascinating studies that you can see what some BU students have accomplished during their undergraduate years. Outside of research and internships and study abroad and academics, um, we know that all of those are an important part of the academic learning that's happening for our students here on campus. But this isn't just a campus of academic buildings, of laboratories, and of classrooms. It's also a community of students within the city of Boston. Students who, as I mentioned before, are traveling from across the US and around the world to study on our campus. Students who are living in our residence halls and our dorms here. Students who are participating in clubs and activities outside of the classroom. There are about 450 different clubs and activities that exist here at Boston University. Um, and everything that you can imagine from political organizations to performing groups, religious life, athletics, and community service, just to name a few. Community service is perhaps one of the most important aspects of the student life here at BU. Our students believe in that strong commitment to service and, uh, and, and they and we know that Boston University would not be the same without the city of Boston. So there is that level of service back to the city that we get to call home. This happens throughout the academic year. It happens do, during, um, our, uh, during different types of programs that travel across the US and around the world. But community service starts each and every year here on campus with a program called FISOP, which begins before the fall semester. Now, Caitlin, I know that you were heavily engaged with FISOP, and you still are. Can you share a little bit of uh, understanding about FISOP? What does FISOP stand for? Um, what type of program is it? And why has it been an important part of your experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so FISOP stands for First Year Student Outreach Project. So anyone in their first year can actually do this program. Um, basically, what this program is, is you come to BU one week before you start your fall semester, typically the last week of August. Um, you actually get to move in before your roommate, so that's a perk of the program. Um, but basically, what you do that entire week is you go throughout different um, areas in the city of Boston and you volunteer at different locations every single day. 
Um, so when I did that program, I know we went to a soup kitchen, an elementary school, as well as a nursing home. Um, and every single day, we just spent about six or eight hours volunteering there, interacting with the people there, um, and also interacting with the group of students that you're with. Um, you're typically put in a group of about 10 students, and you're with them the entire week. So you actually make 10 friends before you even start your freshman year, which is something that I really liked about the program. Um, and obviously, like you said, the spirit of BU is kind of community service and giving back to the Boston community. Um, so that's something I really enjoyed about about the program as well. So outside of the FISOP experience or any other community service aspects that you're involved with, can you share with us maybe your one of your other um, top experiences that you're engaged with here? Is there another club or activity that really stands out as, as important to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm involved in a lot here on campus, but I think the thing that I'm most excited about is something called Her Network. It's something I've actually recently joined this past semester. Her Network is basically a networking club for women in business. So as I am transitioning more into my business minor um, currently, it is something I'm really interested in. Um, we actually recently had a women in business conference. So we got to hear from a lot of different women who hold all different roles in areas such as um, fashion or finance or consulting. Um, and we got to hear about their day-to-day -day, uh, roles and their jobs and how they kind of got on that path to that career. So it's a really rewarding club and I feel like it's something where I'm learning a lot and also getting a lot from that club. Awesome. Now, another important part to the community here at Boston University is the residential aspect of that community. Um, we guarantee housing for all students for their entire undergraduate experience um, here at BU. That's true for both first year students and transfers, that you'll have that guaranteed housing here at, um, here at Boston University. Um, and about 75% of students will remain on campus for all four years. They'll never leave our on-campus residence halls, dorms, apartment style, um, uh, living facilities, um, really different types of housing that exist on the different parts of our campus. Now, Caitlin, I know as an RA um, this year that you've lived on campus um, so far for, for three years and you're planning to stay for the fourth year. Can you talk a little bit about your residential experiences as a student? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my first year here, my freshman year, I actually lived over in our western portion of campus. So it's a little bit down this way, down Commonwealth Avenue. Um, over there, I lived in Rich Hall. Um, so Rich Hall actually oversees our entire soccer field and our outdoor track. So it was really cool to kind of see the players out there, um, the band practices out there. And there's also a dining hall over there, of course, for all of the students. So it's a really great community your first year. Everyone's kind of looking for friends over in West Campus, so that was a great place to live. Um, my sophomore year, I lived in our Miles Standish Hall, so that's actually in our eastern part of campus. So I've kind of lived um, the entire campus life. I've lived everywhere on campus. Um, and Miles Standish was actually recently renovated, so it was really cool to live there when it was brand new. Um, and they have really nice study rooms and everything, so I always studied with friends there. Um, we watched The Bachelor there on Monday nights, obviously. Um, but it was a really great place to live, and I definitely kind of found that I liked East Campus living a little bit more. Um, so after my sophomore year, I decided to apply for the resident assistant position, which is what I currently am doing. Um, the resident assistant is basically the person in your residence hall who makes sure that all the roommates are getting along, everyone's safe in the building, that there's a general sense of community in the building. Um, so I'm currently living again in East Campus in one of our beautiful brownstones and loving my job as a resident assistant um, and also doing that again next year as well. Awesome. So while part of the community that exists is here on our campus, it's also important to talk about the larger community that exists here in the city of Boston. We know that the city of Boston is you know, one of the most important things that students think about when they're coming to BU. Um, they know um, that in addition to all of the great things that Caitlin and I have talked about today, that they get to do all of that while living here in the city of Boston, taking advantage of everything that this city has to offer. Boston is home to a large number um, of, of college students. Um, and uh, because of that, there are, you know, it, it's a city that is really accessible um, for students, that is really accessible and known for its kind of focus on academia and knowledge. And it allows our students um, to really take advantage of all of those opportunities, whether it's free admission to museums, discounts at other vendors, um, exploring the culture, the arts, the food, um, the sports, um, just life here in the city of Boston, I think can be really um, an important part of your overall experience. So Caitlin, when you think about your three years so far, what is living in Boston uh, meant to you? How has that you know, kind of shifted your understanding? Yeah, so Boston's great. It's mainly all for like college kids. We're the majority of the population here in Boston. So a lot of the businesses and places around the city of Boston really cater to our needs, which is pretty cool. Um, but something that's really awesome is we get a lot of free admissions, like you said, into a lot of museums. Um, we get $9 Red Sox tickets. So my friends and I will go and see a lot of Red Sox games um, when the season starts, which is really nice. Um, we also do a lot. Um, 
just out in the city, my friends and I, we go and have uh, food at different restaurants. We try out different cuisines. Um, we'll go to different workout classes. We'll go salsa dancing. There's really a lot to do um, in the city of Boston. And a lot of the times it is at reduced or free prices just because they know that we're college students and we like free things. Awesome. Yeah. So, Caitlin, you and I have talked about a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. The academics here at Boston University, the life on campus, mm -hmm. professors, your fellow students. But when you look back, um, you know, three years ago, um, when you were sitting in the same seats as many of our viewers today, um, you know, what, what was one of the reasons why you ultimately chose Boston University to call your home for your undergraduate experience? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there were a ton of different reasons. Being someone who applied as a science major, that was something that was really important to me, was a university that was strong in the sciences, just like Boston University is. We do also have a couple thousand laboratories that our students can join here at BU, so I knew that I had the opportunity to join a research lab if I wanted to. Um, also being a pre-med student, I knew that was really important to me to have that connection with my advisor. So when I was applying to BU, I actually reached out to my current pre-med advisor, and she was telling me, don't worry about getting internships or getting volunteer hours. I can totally help you with that. That's my entire job. Don't worry. Um, so that's something that really drew me into the university as a whole. Um, also, I was applying to colleges at 16 years old, so I figured by the time I was 21, I would probably change my mind on what I wanted to study, which didn't end up happening, funny enough. Um, but I was really looking for a university that had hundreds of different programs that I could study in the event that I did want to change my mind or study something different or even add on a minor like I did in something that has nothing to do with science. Um, and then finally, I did also choose to come to BU because because when I was applying, I think we had about 400 clubs students could join. Now that number is even closer to 500, but I knew I really wanted to be involved here on campus in all of my different jobs that I have and all the different clubs that I'm a part of and really passionate about. So that was a huge draw for me and why I ultimately ended up choosing BU. Awesome. So I, I hope that the information that Caitlin and I have shared today has been helpful to help you understand a little bit more about what it means to be a Boston University student um, academically, um, culturally, uh, in the community here on campus, um, what that might look like for you. Um, it's just really important to know that we take the academics seriously um, here at Boston University. We take the fact that this is a community in Boston seriously. And we also want to make sure that all students are enjoying their time on campus. Um, they're being successful in their classes and they're being successful when they graduate from Boston University. Um, and we know that the work that we're doing um, is paying off for our graduates. About 96% of Boston University graduates have a full-time job or are enrolled full-time in graduate school within six months of graduation. Taking advantage of the opportunities like internships, research and study abroad, as well as the advice from advisors and faculty here at BU, paying attention in your classes and engaging with every member of the Boston University community are ways that our students are setting themselves up for the success that awaits them after graduation. So I hope that this information that Caitlin and I have shared today has been helpful um, for all of you to understand a little bit more about Boston University. I think it's safe to say that we could spend a couple hours talking about every single detail about BU. And so since we don't have the time to do that today, we encourage you to visit our website, bu.edu admissions, to learn more about the opportunities that can await you as a Boston University student. We look forward to connecting with you sometime soon on the phone, via email, or through social media to answer the questions that you have about life as a Boston University student or the application process. Thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you the best of luck as you contemplate over the months ahead your application to Boston University, and we look forward to seeing you on campus soon. Thank you so much for joining us.